Good morning, beautiful humans. Thank you for joining me on another episode here on Creative Street. Today, I have with me Shubi, who in is a soul is a soul guiding others on her journey back home, but on their journey back home by helping them remember who they are and coming into their power. Um, she is a mindset mentor and an empowerment coach. Um, so hi, Shubi. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Steph. I'm very, very excited to have this conversation with you. Same. I'm so excited to have you. Um, think like I know it's super early over there, um, in India, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we're gonna dive in into how is it that you bring creativity into being an empowerment coach? Yeah. Wow. Creativity is such a cornerstone of expressing ourselves, of being ourselves. And I feel like when we live in authenticity, when we live in our truth, we are in our power. That's how I love to bring empowerment and creativity together. Because as long as we're not living in our truth, how can we be living in our power? And our creative expression is so unique. And I mm-hmm. don't mean like the creative art like painting and dancing but I believe creativity is in every single thing that we do like how you chop vegetables how you make a plan and I'm a former software engineer so for me to bring creativity in the spreadsheets I make in the presentations I make in the connections I made with people I feel creativity was such an important tool in my own journey of exploring and getting to know who I am and empowering myself and I love to share that as a tool with other people, clients on my Instagram and let it flow with their power and their creativity together. Yeah, I mean it's you're absolutely right. Creativity is like found in everything that we do, um, down to the everyday work like software, <laughs> like your data and stuff, to like any way that we express ourselves. Um do you think you were always a creative person like growing up? I feel, yeah, like there were phases and there were different um, instances like my cre- how my creativity showed up. And my mom used to give this example and I don't remember this one, but like she always says like, you're such a creative person, like even as a kid. And there was an incomplete like picture of Mahatma Gandhi, who's a very important figure in India. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just completed like this picture with the spec because I was like, who needs spec? Like this picture is incomplete. And I just <laughs> drew this spec. And my mom just always tells that story, you know, like her mom, mm-hmm. right? Like she she always tells <laughs> the story to everyone. And I feel like as a kid, I always had this desire to, you know, like, to bring like there used to be a section in the newspaper to like use waste uh, to make something it it, it in the local language it was called kabar uh, mm-hmm. which means like you you take something which is crap and turn it into like something very resourceful and i used to do a lot of diy projects a lot of paper mache um like fixing things and using things and like my i feel even my brain got such a boost from doing that Mm -hmm. and I used to love these uh craft classes as a kid um I was not the highest coder like it was more about just you know like fixing something and making it useful making it more beautiful like I feel like that was that was my uh objective of doing that that's awesome so how did you get into coaching Oh, it it has been quite a journey. <laughs> it has been quite a journey. Like, oh, I can talk about it for so long. Um, Shad, it was like I, and just like I said, my creative expression always evolved, it changed. And mm-hmm. as a teenager, like I just got disconnected from art, like painting and scrapbooking and all of those things. And I got more into poetry writing and expressing my emotions. And I had um, bouts of like depression and loneliness come up as a teenager because I feel like I was different and I was a very high performer and high achiever. Mm-hmm. So I'd never felt like people really understood me and they thought I was lucky. They thought I didn't 
study hard enough, but it was actually the opposite. I was just giving up so much of me and I felt so lonely. Um, so I started writing poetry to express myself. And it, it was mostly for myself and I did share it with a very few close friends. Mm-hmm. And when I went to college, it it became more something like I would share it on my Facebook or I would do something about it. And as I evolved, like I also got disconnected from that and it became very um something that I would do like when I had like highs and lows of emotion mm-hmm. and it took me a very long time to figure out like when I'm writing poetry it's like I'm either at an emotional high or at an emotional low mm-hmm. and even in my career and my job as a software engineer I felt like I just thrived on the rush on the like you know just like the doing of things just like going ahead and it was an emotional high like I loved I loved <clears throat> I loved the stress I loved it sounds so bad <laughs> no 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 I I, I get that <laughs> I, I love the stress I love the rush I like like getting things done doing it being on mm-hmm. my toes but after a certain point and especially in uh in lockdown when we were in close like I couldn't have that and it just made me feel so miserable Mm-hmm. and I turned to poetry I did a lot of challenges uh like you know like read every day like I, I did a crazy challenge of reading like 52 books a year in 2020 like mm-hmm. I, I did this girl got crazy um and I also did this challenge of like pushing myself to write a thousand words every morning oh wow and I did that like for 40 42 ish days mm-hmm. and then I was I was just like okay it's, it's for some reason I just stopped it was too much like I was I was doing the job I was doing the household work which mm-hmm. someone else was responsible for before lockdown and it was just like so much and my physical health deteriorated and all of those downfall happens like it was so incremental mm-hmm. that it was just like you know it was layering up about like teenage trauma and then just like the rush of everything and then mm-hmm. like having this perfect woman, good girl syndrome, and just like doing everything by myself. But I can do it. I can mm-hmm. just like do everything. And it led me into like actual anxiety and depression. And I used to have mm-hmm. panic attacks. And it took me a whole while in the last three, four years to recover from that and to mm-hmm. move out of that. And a part of my journey was about becoming so empowered and so strong like I can heal myself through this mm-hmm. that it felt like I need to really share this message with the world I cannot feel like it's so delicious and people need it so much especially mm-hmm. after like what we've gone through as a collective mm-hmm. in the last few years I feel like this needs to be out there like 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 we really need someone and like not someone a lot of someone mm-hmm. um guide us back a journey of who are and connecting back to our power mm-hmm. like I completely I a hundred percent agree with you in that well number one I totally get that like I love being in that rush and like just I I don't know why but I love that that feeling of like taking on that challenge and and like you mentioned like being like yeah I can do this and I can do this but you're absolutely right there comes a point where like you we just we burn ourselves out and we don't even realize that we burn ourselves out um and i i love your your journaling um book that you that you uh that you like released like i was reading through it and i was like this is super cute and like so helpful i love it um i and one of the things that it struck me was before like you even get into into the journaling questions like you asked like the reader like to make a commitment and the one that stood out to me that I was just like ooh, that could be a challenge not just for myself but like for most people is can you trust yourself enough to not judge the answers that come like when you start doing this journaling I think that's like that's a really challenging thing because we want to we want to kind of like you know, uh, make sure that like, you know, we're being what we perceive ourselves to be instead of just letting things flow. Um, so is like, 
is being a coach like something you're trying to be more into in terms of like I guess you're a software engineer and you're not and you're a coach is it like how how is it combining the two um in your everyday life and how does that like you know reflect (laughs) yeah at the time we are recording this I am not working at a job oh okay yeah yeah I I actually left it last year to explore a lot of different things that were available to me Mm -hmm. I may get back to it or I may not like I'm I'm not like very certain about Mm -hmm. like how my life is gonna be from this next year um rather than November I don't know when the episode (laughs) comes out um just just want to put blood like timeline uh, for other people but I actually started this journey in 2021 mm-hmm. um, earlier and I did this and it's it's all good it all goes back to like doing challenges and pushing myself a lot and I did this challenge of like writing 100 posts for 100 days on mm-hmm. uh, Twitter and Instagram and just like posting it and getting myself out there and that mm-hmm. was not for becoming a coach that was more like how can I just express myself without judging who I am and without letting others judgment of my opinions and thoughts matter and after I did I got so many comments like from people who I'd never spoken to and they were like it's just so um, refreshing and empowering to read your post every day and that got me into thinking like how can I express this more Mm-hmm. So after I did that, I did a weekly um, newsletter and then I kind of let that flow. And after a while, I was just like, this is this is good, but it's not changing lives the mm-hmm. way that I want. And I went for a certification and then I went for another certification. And I was just like, you know, it, it was layering. It was pushing myself and not judging what was going to come. Mm-hmm. Some of the things I did didn't result uh as being the option for me Mm -hmm. um but I felt last year that I really needed to take a break from everything Mm -hmm. and focus on how I want to express myself and how I want to show up in the world as me still did love my engineering job like it was I worked with the most (laughs) amazing brilliant talented people and I did love a lot of aspects of my job like I feel like something that I miss um, is the fast-paced environment Mm -hmm. because you have to think on yourself and you have to just, like, be ready. Uh, It did cause me a lot of stress in life. But when I initially started, I was balancing both. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult. It was really difficult because it was a time when I had to learn and I had to teach and I had all these other commitments. And for me, it was easier because I had the support because I was living with my parents at the time Mm -hmm. um and I didn't have to take care like of cooking I didn't have to take care of cleaning and all of those things and I I felt really supported back then so if someone's just like in that journey of doing something that's a bit like you know like having two careers merged and like exploring who they are I feel like Having support of people who can help you reach that is really good. Maybe you don't have family, but like having a cook or having someone who can help you clean or maintain the house and Mm -hmm. take care of other responsibilities like that, that really helps. And that's like the the simplest thing that I could think of at the moment, (laughs) like even back then. And I feel like sometimes it's it's difficult to receive help from Mm -hmm anyone Mm -hmm. and like I said like we are so hyper dependent and we want to get everything done but it's so beautiful when you ask someone for help because they feel so valued and they feel so loved in being able to support us um I guess yeah like that that's the simplest I could answer I love that and it's like you find a way to connect them and, and make them a part of your journey um as like an individual and and I love that um so would you what what how would you describe the value of creativity 
in, in from your perspective? Ah, I love this question because there could be so many answers. Mm-hmm. I, I feel, I feel, and I feel we were talking about it earlier as well. I feel my creativity led me to my spirituality. Mm-hmm. And this was an idea that I discovered in the book, um, The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. I actually have it right here. And I wanted mm. to say, like, anyone who's, yes. who's into reading, it's like, in your initial creativity journey, uh, I like 100% recommend it to anyone. <laughs> um, so when I read this, I was like triggered as well as excited by this idea first. But mm-hmm. then I let myself explore. I let my creativity come up and the challenge for writing like a thousand words, which was an extra mile, okay, came from this book. I was like, I'm going to push myself to write. And I did continue my writing journey in journaling in other things. And it helped me discover who I am. And I feel spirituality was not just about finding God and finding the universe and all those amazing things. This do sound very, very good when we hear them. Like I, I was enchanted by them at a point. Mm-hmm. But it was really a journey of coming back home to myself coming back to who I am and feel our creative expression is so unique even in one single thing like if you are after drawing up and I am after drawing up we'll have so different expressions of that mm-hmm. and we are we are asked to express the apple in our own ways I may write a poem and you may express it in some other way and my software engineer friend may just express the dimensions of it and <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we, we we have right. our own ways and methods and how our brains work and I feel like that that's what makes us all so unique and interesting because mm-hmm. we have so unique expressions and we have suppressed so much of it as we grow up and I I, I was reading this the other day the other day that uh, we have like as adults like when we reach twenties we're just like we're not creative enough. Mm-hmm. We're not, and it, it, I just feel so sad um, hearing that because we're not letting just our creativity shine and come through us. And once we let it out, it's just like it feels, it, you know, this feeling of flow when you're just mm-hmm. in your zone and it just flows out of you. I feel like mm-hmm. that's God speaking through us and that's connecting to our expression and that spirituality and that creativity and that's just like the eternal flow of life and creating and I feel like all great artists, writers, poets, like everyone went through that and even architects and engineers. Mm-hmm. I, I just feel like we are such divine beings in creating what we're meant to create in this lifetime and it helps so many other people go through that and mm-hmm. A few days back, I was discussing like this with my brother about like how bridges help people cross between different islands and places. And I just feel like that's such a beautiful expression because sometimes you look at it, sometimes you click pictures, but it helps us connect even mm-hmm. in different parts of land. Like it's, it's, it's just like the way that you start looking at things and everything starts appearing like it's creative, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And we just need to have that lens when we view ourselves too. Like, how can we be that expression? How is something that we do maybe guide a friend or maybe just express us in a pottery class? And, you know, like all these different things, everything is very creative. How you create um, a dish and how you cook. How I love cooking. And it's also like an expression and outlet for me. Mm-hmm. So how can we allow ourselves speak as God and not in the sense of being like oh, I'm the supreme being blah 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 mm-hmm. but more like how can I serve others through my creativity and also be so honest and so vulnerable with who I am and just be in my truth and my power that was well said well put like you're the state of being in flow, I completely agree with you. It's like you're, it is like talk, like being God for a while. You're allowing the energy to flow through you and, and ex- 
and let things be as they naturally are. And I that's literally what I love about creativity is when you get into that flow and you just, you're not putting any boundaries to it. You're just allowing yourself to be in, in wow. Um, you, you expressed it so like perfectly. <laughs> um, so what's your ebook about? I, you did mention that you, you made an ebook. Is that similar in terms of concept? Yeah, I created this ebook because this is, the first of all, the ebook is about five days of journaling. It's about creating clarity for yourself. Mm-hmm. And the reason I created this ebook was I used to do like different challenges, like different the challenge, but different like planners and guides and journaling activities throughout the year to get to know myself. And I feel like they all were really good, but they were very disconnected in a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. That's something else with something else and something else with something else. And I feel like I just needed a very wholesome view of my life and of the past, present, and future. Mm-hmm. And that was something that I really kept in mind when I was creating the ebook. And if, you, if you've gone through the exercise, like the first one really talks about your life and what your life has been up to this point. And it really helps you take stock of what's important for you and what was the important moments in your life. And then we go on to discovering who we are right now, what are our values, what are our fears, who we see as our role models. And finally, fifth day, which is um, a very, if if you go to the fifth day, you'll see the software engineer brain of mine. Uh, <laughs> you'll see the software engineer brain of mine. Like I, I backtrack, I create everything back to the simplest of details. And it's about mm-hmm. planning the next year. And I felt like the, this was the time to release it. Because mm-hmm. we are we are in the transition to go to twenty twenty four and be mm-hmm. excited, and but the question that you asked me does it have a similar concept? Yes, because once you create that clarity in your mind about who you are, it's easier to express yourself. It's easier mm-hmm. to be who you are because when you just sit down and let this flow and not judge yourself, as you mm-hmm. mentioned from the book. You don't judge yourself. You get to see who you really are, how you have transformed. And it also helps us to accept how we are different from who we were like one year ago and even one week ago at times. Because sometimes mm-hmm. changes are so big, we cannot just put them like, okay, that was a year ago. Now I've changed. Maybe mm-hmm. it was just the other week. And to acknowledge those changes and give them space. And I feel it's helpful for someone if you've never tried journaling and you're just like okay blank piece of paper what do I write on you mm-hmm. um that that's a different challenge and it also opens up so many pathways but initially I feel like having that guidance and level of support to know what you're gonna write it creates much more clarity in, it, in an organized way mm-hmm. the software engineering is coming up <laughs> but <laughs> Like no, I that's, love it. and and that's how like I feel like I have combined because I'm 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 a very rational and practical thinker, and I also love spirituality and I also love creativity and flow and I feel like this mm-hmm. journey was just a perfect space for me to bring both together and merge them into one and that's one beautiful beautiful journal. Like <laughs> guys, get it, get it. Like it's not no, yes. because I created. It. <laughs> definitely I do recommend it's it's an amazing it's an amazing tool to have um you ask you you ask like questions and and like put like statements out there that it really does cause an internal monologue to come out and it's like you mentioned that um in, in the beginning of the of the journal like you mentioned like sometimes it's You need it to have it in writing so that you could see it. You can go back to it. It becomes real. Once we, we don't realize that once we put something out there into the ether and like you say something or you write something, it makes it real instead of it just constantly being in your head. And, you know, and that's why, um, 
that's why I can, I, I personally, when I was like looking through it, I was like, this can get really scary because it goes back to that judgment of like, what am I going to think? What am I going to say? And how am I going to, how is this going to make me really feel? And how am I going to, um, challenge myself to push through that and find those solutions and work through those, whatever internal struggles, um, that arise from just reflecting and going and finding that clarity. Um, so, but honestly, amazing tool. Love it. <laughs> um, oh, ow, sorry. Um, so creativity and spirituality, like you were mentioning, goes like hand in hand. Um, how, how does that creative pursuit really um, help a person like advance that spiritual journey? Like, in more in depth like what what are some things yeah i feel we all came from the same source we all mm -hmm. come from the same god but what really makes you different than me i feel spirituality is the pursuit of finding ourselves and finding god Mm -hmm. through that pursuit and as unique as we all are we are all connected and this is something very interesting and humbling for me this year was finding that everything that I was speaking in different gurus and different teachers and scriptures and all those things they all come back to similar truths Nobody's telling you something that's like, it's, it's exclusive, it's different, it's one mm -hmm. of a kind. But what you mentioned earlier, just before this, was accepting things. And I feel acceptance is thrown around so much, so commonly, but it's such a difficult thing to do. For me, it definitely, definitely was to accept myself. And to be a kid, I used to be quiet, then I grew up to be this adult with um, these ideas in my head that I'm the quiet one. And I'm definitely not quiet. <laughs> if you see my Instagram, you have, uh, oh, you, you know I'm not quiet. <laughs> and my, spiritually, uh, my spiritual journey was about learning all of those things that I thought about myself. And all of the things that are really true for me in this moment. And I have come to believe that things might change next year. Things might be very different. I may be doing something entirely different. I have no idea at this point. And I feel there are so many things that affect us in our journey of life. And in effect, our spiritual journey, that we cannot fully express ourselves in one single moment. And that's why we have a lifetime. And that's why it's like the work is never over to heal ourselves, to connect back to the source, to God. And creativity is important, not just for expressing yourself, for, but for expressing yourself the way that you are, not the way that some famous painter was or your best friend is or even the ways that you thought you were last year but who you are right now and I feel my creative expression evolved as my years uh, went by even as a kid even though I was not on a spiritual journey but it really got me connecting to who I was in each phase and what I thought and right now I don't write as much poetry but I do write a lot of journal talks. <laughs> I, do, I do speak a lot on Instagram about connecting back to ourselves and going uh, like going inwards and guiding ourselves back to home. And in a way, my creative expression has changed, but I feel the message has always been the same. It has been to be true and authentic and ourselves and be in our power and just the expression that keeps on changing and refining and everything that happens in our life starts to reflect 
mm-hmm. in my expression too. And I feel like once you are on a spiritual and creative journey, you will see how you evolve. The more you learn about yourself and your art, and it just becomes more beautiful and it's it's such a beautiful thing to explore that. That was gorgeous. It's beautiful. Like you, you framed it in a very beautiful way. And and what you said was very, it's very um, meaningful. Um, Like it, spirituality really does. I feel like, okay. I feel like the essence of spirituality is that self-expression. Spirituality is made by humans and it's that connection to the deeper, to the deeper aspect. And when you're being creative, you're being spontaneous, you're connecting to something that is much deeper within you and within the universe. And that imagination that, like you mentioned earlier, like, in our 20s and in our 30s and as we get older and adults and get sidetracked by all the all the chaos and all the noise in the world it's like something that you do less and less when really that's what allows you to connect back to yourself and to that source like you mentioned because i also i i believe in that like we we are all connected to this um in the alchemist, he called it like uh, Paulo Coelho called it like the the soul of the of the of the of the world of the earth, um, and in many other books that I read, it's it's something. It always goes back to like this one source that we're all just versions of that we all come out of. Um, you said it so beautifully. Um, Were, are you the only like creative person like in your family or is this like do other of your family members if you feel comfortable talking about it <laughs> like is other persons in your family also creative do they do something like you know that might have helped uh nourish and 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 empower your growth i feel yeah um, not in the very traditional way, um, but my mom is really creative with mm-hmm. her recipes and like the way she cooked. Um, especially in my younger years, like she would experiment with all like even Indian cuisine is so big because we are such mm-hmm. a diverse nation, and she would just like pick a recipe from this region and make her own twist to it. And I feel like I just grew up like I didn't value that as much as a kid but like mm-hmm. when I started my adult journey and I started like uh, having my own tiny experiments like I've done crazy experiments with food mm-hmm. so I feel like I've done experiments <laughs> with everything in my life no like, that's great <laughs> you, you know like we I, I made I made a desert I made desert like I don't know if you've eaten here here is one of my favorite things in desert it's like water uh, milk um rice and sugar just combined in the right mm. flavor and it's just like it's such a gorgeous thing um i made it in college in an electric kettle like you <laughs> cannot hear someone doing that like i i was and i feel like i didn't realize the influence my mom had in me um until like i got stuck at i, I was really say stuck at home uh during lockdown and see my mom cook because she was just like making anything out of anything and it was edible so everything my mom makes is edible which was my I feel like it was it was a silent inspiration um she didn't let me cook as a kid even though I was very curious um Mm -hmm. which is I think the reason I never made this connection earlier um but my mom's very very creative um my dad's also creative but he's he's more creative in the way like a very practical person like to find like the shortest way to do everything Mm -hmm. Um, we actually have an algorithm in computer science (laughs) like (laughs) for what he does but like my dad my dad was very like um resourceful Mm -hmm. Uh, and I saw that and I feel like that helped me a lot in being a quick thinker um and I'm the oldest of all so 
I don't have any older sibling to watch uh, and learn from, but my younger sister was definitely um, interested in art and she was very inspired by me, but I feel like she was a more beautiful artist. Like she's so much better than me in creating <laughs> art and painting. Like, I, I mean, I, I have to be proud and be also just like right now and be like, I, I am very, very proud of her. Um, and I have a younger brother too, and he's more of a planner kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a really bit of a finger on his face. But I feel like they're, they're mixed fun in the family. <laughs> yeah, it seems like everybody's like pretty well-rounded. I love that. No, because yeah. honestly, it's a great way to like be able to like bounce things off of each other and stuff like that. Oh, that's good. That's great. Um, so Shubi, I'm going to wrap it up and I hope we can get back to a part two and like continue. Um, but I think uh, this, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, before we go, any what if you could ask if the audience, if you could leave the audience with one question, one challenge, right? Mental challenge for them to think about throughout the day. What would that be? Um, the first thing that popped up in my mind was who am I being in this moment and there's just like let your imagination run wild with this question am I being angry Mm -hmm. am I being excited am I being something that I don't want to put a label on what am I being in this moment and I feel like just carry those questions throughout the day and check in with yourself every hour and you will find a pattern. You'll find a pattern of your thoughts. You'll find a pattern of how you view yourself. And just having that awareness, worship, so many things. I feel like that's a beautiful thing. Yes, that, that is a great question. I'm going to go ahead and also leave it in the polls so everybody can drop their stuff and I want to share it with Shubi. So uh, let's see what some of these responses are. Um, thank you for joining me on uh, on this episode of Creative Street, Shubi. It was a pleasure having you. I can't wait for part two. And thank you for taking the time <laughs> to wake up so early to meet with me. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much. You know, also this morning at 3.32, I exactly woke up out of being startled. And I was just like, oh, my God, it's 8.30. Like, I was in a dream that it's 8.30 and I missed the and whole you missed show. It. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I just, I was just like, oh, my God, I need to rush. I need to get, I need to look this in. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, no, no. No, and don't worry. In the future, we'll find we'll find something that works, you know, for both of us. Uh, like you know, luckily th- this worked out, but we'll find we'll find better timing because this is happening again. <laughs> I love this. I, had, I love talking to you, and it was just like very beautiful, flowy conversation, and I love it. Like hit my brains at the right spot, and I just feel so grateful to be able to share it with you and your audience and just like inspire them on their creative journey and let them be a better version of it. I'm so glad guys are part of your journey. Yes. Um, no, yes. Thank and thank you for sharing though it was you have such a really pretty way of articulating and putting into because it's like you mentioned almost any any guru that you that you read any type of book any type of philosophy that i've ever read when it comes to re- creativity like they all say more or less the same thing it's it's that essence that flows through us that allows us to communicate with something bigger than us but the way that you articulated and you are and you framed it and reframed it for the audience and for myself like it it's very impactful, very meaningful. And what you like the tools you've provided to be able to reflect and find that clarity, it's gonna 
it makes a difference and it's going to continue to make a difference in the world and see that change that you're working towards. Like, and so thank you. Thank you. We are definitely doing this again. (laughs) No, for sure. For sure. (laughs) All righty, guys. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you again for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful day. (laughs) Thank you.